Hello, Jack Jackson back again, and we're going to talk this uh, video about discrete random variables and a probability density function as a PDF. So a random variable assigns a number to disjoint events from a probability distribution such that each event receives a specific number. So in other words, there's a function mapping events to values of the random variable. A discrete probability density function, PDF, maps values of the random variable into the interval 0, 1, uh, closed interval, such that if x is the random variable for event, then the probability of x is, uh, is the probability of that event. And if we add up all the probabilities of each possible value of the random variable, um, if we add up their probabilities, then the probabilities must sum to 1. So the gra and we can graph this. So we can make a table of uh, x and then and PDF of x values, and we can also graph it. And the way we typically graph these is bar graphs. So the graph of a discrete probability density function is a bar graph where the input x value is the value of the random variable, and the output y value or height of the bar is the corresponding probability. In other words, it's just like a population relative frequency histogram, which is kind of kind of what it is. It's very similar to that. So when we here's an example. When we roll a fair die once, the set of possible outcomes is, well, here that is, which is uh, which is this, which are these are the actual dice rolls. But if we let x be the number of dots on the upward face, then x is a random variable. So the possible values for x are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I mean, technically, you don't get a 4. You get this face up that has four dots. But we can refer to that by the random variable uh, x equals 4. And so the, this, these values of the random variable, the possible values there, are actually the domain of the PDF. Now, technically, the random variable actually has a, is a function, so... The input is the actual outcomes here, sample space, and the output are the values here. But then in turn, these values will be the, the input for the PDF. So you're going to really just think of these as the, the possible inputs, the possible values of the, of the X values will be the input for your PDF. So let's see if you can take this one and make a table and graph of the PDF for this particular probability density function. Press pause and come back when you're finished. Press pause now. Well, the table is the different x values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and they all have the same probability, which is 1, 6. Notice that these probabilities must be between 0 and 1 inclusive, and they must add up to 1. And then for each of these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we actually draw a bar and the height of the bar is the same as the probability. Now we also have the widths of the bars need to be the same. So in this case, then the area of the bar is, is proportional to the probability. If the base is 1, then the area and the probability are the same. But the base doesn't have to be 1, but it needs to be the same width across the base for each one of these. All right, so let's look at this. Here's a table, uh, well, incomplete table for a PDF for a finite distribution, and it shows all the possible x values. <clears throat> but if but if you notice the sum and the pro, the PDF of five is missing, can you fill finish this out? Well, first of all, is this even a possible graph uh, table? Is it possible? And if it is. Uh, finish it and make a graph. Go ahead and finish this now. Press pause. Well, let's see. If this is a legit um, PDF, all these values have to be between 0 and 1 inclusive. They, do, they are, and they have to sum to 1. So if the sum is 1, we can do 1 minus 0.3 minus 0.1 minus 0.1 minus 0.05, and that turns out to be 0.45. So now if we add all these up, you do get a sum of 1. And then we can graph it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. And then the heights of the bars are given. 
and sometimes we can actually write the numbers up here so essentially we've got the whole table here as well as a visual representation of the PDF probability density function okay here's the next exercise which of the following are legitimate PDFs why or why not press pause now well let's take a quick look the X values can be anything so the fact that we have some zero and some big numbers or negative numbers makes no difference but the Y values all have to be paused between zero and one inclusive so here's a negative one here so that knocks out C is can't be a PDF and then it can't be bigger than one either so this one see we got a 1.2 here that's not allowed either so D's not not going to work okay now these two at least all the numbers are in the right range they're between zero and one inclusive so then there's one other condition we have to do we have to add them up and if you add up these right here uh, you get uh, bigger than one you get 1.1 and so that's not possible so this is some of the probabilities equal 1.1 is impossible so that's not a good one this so B is the only one that actually work all the values are in between 0 and 1 inclusive and if you add up these probabilities you do get 1 so that's a legitimate PDF okay so in C they do add up to 1 but one of the values is not in the interval 0 1 this negative one and both conditions are fail on the last one they don't add up to 1 and and one of the values is not in 0 1 so there's an introduction to the probability density function or PDF